So now we will start with uh, week three, what we have talked about during uh, the first uh, the first two weeks. First of all, we have talked about problem solving, BCD code, algorithm, flowcharts. Uh, we learned how to write a C++ program, C++ structure, some basic like uh, variable definition, constant definition, and we also talked about uh, 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 something, we talked about how to solve a problem, and I think we have uh, done some labs and some example, and we have solved some cases. So now, uh, this is to just this lecture, just to, to continue what we have learned. We will talk about also intuition and the problem decomposition and assignment operator in C++, inshallah. So, <clears throat> we will, inshallah, go over these slides. Problem solving, we will talk about, first of all, problem solving, and we, we will complete with the programming and the application. Okay. And inshallah, we will pass by what we call input process output charts. We will talk about assignment operators. So, so now, for problem solving, I, I believe I have mentioned that before, before. Which programming model is used for problem decomposition? Dividing the problem, make it make instead of solving the whole problem as a whole, please try to divide the problem, to small smaller problem and try to solve each one separately. Separately, so it is. This is what we recommend actually. Continuation. Intuition is through simply problem student learn that relying too much on intuition without analyzing the problem is dangerous. Solid calculation are much more reliable. We mean by that that estimate don't depend on your thoughts or your opinions or your intuitions. That okay. Please try to analyze the problem for most cases, and depends on some calculation to make your solution more reliable, to make it more reliable, okay? So in that case, you might expend more time in solving the problem, but when you solve it, the, the, the solution will be uh, correct. And inshallah, we, go, we are going to talk about the programming and application. And we will talk about input process output charts, assignment operators. Now we will go over problem solving. We will talk about uh, first of all procedural programming and object oriented programming. Okay. Actually, here we have two models of programming. Okay. Inshallah, what we are going to study here in the first year, CS211 and CS221. Uh, is procedural program, okay? Uh, and what we are going to study, inshallah, in the next second year is the object-oriented programming. So, what is the difference between them? Now, procedural programming focus on the procedure that programmers create. That, that is a procedural programming focus on the action that are carried out. One of the students uh, uh, told me an example uh, in the last lecture in the, in the second, for the second group, and he told me that uh, one of the example for procedural programming is Visual Basic. This is correct, actually. Visual Basic does not use object-oriented programming. It just use procedures. For example, I need to do uh, what I'm going to do when I when I click on the action. What I am going to do when I uh, move the mouse. What I'm going to do when I select an option from the list. 
But now, so we have talked about this. So I am dividing my program based on the task that I am going to work on, based on the task. And this is actually depends on, uh, as, uh, as we said before, decomposition the problem or, or dividing the problem to smaller one in order to solve it. So instead of solving the whole problem, uh, problem which is difficult actually, you will try, uh, it will be easier for you to, to divide the problem to smaller problem, okay? Now, the other concept is object-oriented programming. Uh, you will find this, actually, this, is, this exists in C++, but you are not going to study this in C++, you are going to study this in next year in Java. This kind, just I will give you a, a, a quick example, this kind of programming focus on things, describe their attributes, feature, attribute, and behavior or method that you are going to use. Uh, for example, I just, I will give you an example here. If you have a company, uh, as you, if you want to think about or to do or create or develop a system for, an, for employees, first of all, we are think about the system that this system not, uh, uh, sorry, consist of objects. For example, the employee, the, uh, the employee first, our first object is the employee, okay? Now, all the employee have common or shared attributes like name, address, age, okay? And uh, salary. These are common or shared attributes so that all the employees have this attribute. For sure, every employee has name, and every employee has an age, and every employee has employment date, and so on. So we think uh, 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 the way that we are thinking, uh, why we want to create the system, we are thinking about the things inside our system, the field or the objects inside our system. The first thing is the employee. Now, employee, the employees are different, okay? There are managers, there are, let's say, faculty, there are uh, instructors, whatever, there are researchers, whatever, uh, or uh, engineer, and so on. So now the first, the father object called employee, and the, the lower object called uh, which are uh, called the children or the kids of this employee. So we have, first of all, the father is the employee object, and we have another object, which is which is a children or son for the, the employee, which is called engineer or manager or, uh, let's see, a faculty, uh, whatever. So now we have three children, belongs to the employee. Now these children or these uh, types, uh, uh, managers, uh, engineer and whatever, these, these employee, each object has its, its specific attributes and its specific behavior. But they are shared the same attributes for employee. So, so in this programming, we are applying what we call inheritance, tawarif. Yani, uh, that means I'm going to inherit some attributes from, from the father, and I will have my own attributes. And every object has its own attribute. It's uh, every children or each, every son or every whatever, kids call it whatever you want has its own attributes, its own function, its own method, okay? But they share the same attributes in the father object, okay? This is just a brief description about object-oriented programming. So here in the object-oriented, we apply what we call inheritance, Mabda التوارث, okay? Mabda التوارث. So this is another uh, idea of programming. But what we are going to study here is a procedural program. So uh, I hope this is a clear example. Maybe another example for an object-oriented programming we want to uh, uh, 
create a system for vehicles. We have vehicles is the father, and we have cars, buses, whatever are the sons or the children of this father. And everyone has its own attributes and its own method. So uh, this is about uh, the programming modeling, programming models, diagrams. What we are going to study, inshallah, this is the first two courses, this is procedural program. And you are going to use some and to create some functions. Now I will go to slide number five. If the slide is frozen, tell me and please just download the slides from Blackboard and follow up with me too. That would be easier for me and for you. Actually, uh, sequentially programming is applied uh, in both, in object-oriented and in the procedural programming. So both will be executed in sequence. Now, uh, it is not only in the procedural programming. So if you are writing a code, so either in a procedural programming or object-oriented or whatever, you are going to execute your life sequentially. And you might call, uh, use some control statement, calling another function, whatever. But it is a sequential, for sure. Now, when we are go, when we say that the programming is not sequential, when we are processing the same, many processes at the same time, at the same moment, at the same second, that means we are going to use not only one processor. Processor, we are going to use many many processors. Okay or many CPUs, uh, and this is called parallel programming. Parallel programming is something else. It is not related to object-oriented programming. It is a sequential. An object, what you are going to study here, in, in either in C++ or C, is a sequential processing or a sequential programming, OK? Uh, you might uh, read something about the threads in Java. Threads are not not parallel programming because it is just distribute the task uh, equally or distribute the task, running the task uh, for the same CPU. Okay. So uh, this is advanced topic. I will not talk it about uh, talk about it now. Just make sure yani, be, yani, the project, the object oriented and the procedural programming both are sequential procedural programming. Why, if you are only use one CPU, it is a sequential program, okay? In your VC. If you are go if you are using many CPUs, in that case we are using uh, parallel processing. Okay. Now we will go, now I am in slide number six. Uh, uh, we, are, we are now back for uh, problem solving. We have two time, we have three, two choices for solving the problem. Intuition and problem solving, the second choice and rational problem solving. Now, for Intuition problem solving for the second choice. I just I am do what I used to do every day. If I want to go to my lecture, I know that if I start, I went from my home at 7:40 a.m. I will reach, for example, my lecture because the road is not crowded. But maybe in that day you will be surprised that the road is closed and you will you will be late. You are late. You will not you are not able to reach your lecture. Okay. So this is something that it depends on your intuition. So if this is correct, okay, and sometimes I can use this. Anyone can tell me when can I I use intuition and problem solving? Anyone? But it is not recommended, actually. But when can I use this? Anyone can tell me? Yani, when when can I use uh, intenuation for problem solving? When? Yeah. 
Yes, Ahmed, are you going to, to, to or you? No, no, he forgot to mute his mic. It's mic. So please, uh, when I use intuition of problem solving, when the problem is simple, when the problem is known to me, when uh, when the uh, if I have uh, a good experience in that field, I know the solution. I know the problem. The problem is simple, so that I can use I can use the uh, intuition problem solving. But we always prefer to reuse rational problem solving. Rational problem solving, as you can see here in the second example, uh, the student that wa uh, wants to reach his lecture early, so he used, for example, an application to find the shortest path, and he check if the road is crowded or not, and then he calculate how many minutes for example, needs for walking or to reach his lecture, so he will not be there. Uh, he will not be there. So uh, this this kind of thinking is used when in the programming. We are talking about the programming uh, when the problem is complex. When when uh, my experience in that field is not that deep. Okay. And uh, when I have the ability to gain or get some information or data about the problem, okay? So if I have experience and the problem is complex and I can get information about the problem that I want to solve, it's better to use rational problem solving. But if the problem is simple and I have experience about solving how to solve this problem, and also I don't have data or inputs or some facts about or information about the problem. I can use intuition problem solving. Sorry, intuition problem solving. So this is the difference or the difference between. Them. Okay, here, as you can see here, uh, just reasoning programmer like discuss problem before coding and explore the edge cases of what if some cases happen. Rational problem solving involve, involve using structural, procedural, logical, or linear pattern of thought. Uh, so in this, in this, uh, as we said here, we use some inputs, we use some calculation, we do a lot to solve the problem. This is this is what we do when the problem actually is complex. But if I ask you, for example, to write a program to calculate or find the, the product of two numbers, I don't think that you need to do this rational problem solving. You just depends on your attenuation, intuition, and solve it and do it. Sometimes it faster, sometimes it, it solves the problem. So this is the difference between these two methods. Now I am, uh, I hope the slides and the screen is not frozen. Now I am in slide number uh, eight. Uh, uh, is it okay now? I am assigned a yeah, right. We can That's see. That. Okay. Now, <clears throat> as I said before here, it, intuition may not be correct. Okay. It may not be correct. May, may not. Maybe be correct in some cases, as I mentioned before. And might be not accurate. So, but what we are what we are advising you to use rational problem. Okay. So uh, solving. Uh, if you have input, if you have, if your, as we said, your problem is complex, if you can do some calculation, please use rational problem solving. Uh, yes, as some of these rational problem solving are flow charts, what we are going to see today, uh, today is IPO, which is input processing output charts, and inshallah we will talk about this shortly. Now, inshallah, I mean. 
Now, we, uh, anyone can tell me, uh, summarize what we have mentioned until now. Yani can anyone summarize this, what we have talked about until now? How many, <clears throat> I will ask. What, what are the techniques to use in the problem solving? Which is better? What do you think, guys? It is rational problem solving or intuition problem solving? Yalla Shabab, which is better? Yes, Mishari, go ahead. It depends about the problem. If it's, uh, if it's simple, it's uh, easier to use intuition problem solving. Yes, it's difficult, uh, you have to use the situational yes. problem solving. Yes, this is what I want you to do. Uh, actually, in computer science, you, you need to think what to use and how to use. Okay, how to solve your uh, problem. What is the better way to do this? Okay. Uh, you will see yourself that you will not use yeah, any if you have uh, if you worked a lot on writing programs i call it simple like that you you are not using paper and pen or flowchart alone okay but if you if you have face a problem you will find a complex problem you will find yourself that you are going to uh, use uh, flow charts or PCD code or whatever or, or any type of charts in order to simplify the problem for you and help you to divide the problem. Okay, but what is bit what is good and sometimes in in a problem so in rational problem solving that you are using a pen and a paper. You are not sitting at a computer. You just uh, uh, you have a paper and a pen, and you start uh, to write your PCB code or algorithm, and this will help you actually better to focus. Okay. Sometimes looking at the screen a lot uh, make you uh, lose concentrate, or you will you will not be able to focus anymore. So sometimes developers or programmers. Don't look at the screen and start writing their algorithm on a paper or a level. So, or using pen or whatever. So this helps them actually to concentrate more and focus more. Okay. You will see that if you are go, sitting beside your colleague and you have maybe an error and you don't, you don't know what's this error. Maybe if you have a uh, talk with your colleague something for two one or two minutes and then you came back you will find that this error is simple how uh, how uh, i uh, how i couldn't see this error before it is very very simple and it can be solved easily so sometimes if you leave the screen for one or two minutes then you go you 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 go back again you will you will focus you will focus uh, you your concentration will be better and you will focus more so this is one of the idea of using rational and or what we call this chicken we will go we will go through this inshallah right now now one of the technique that we have used before is Flow charts with decode, and there are another uh, charts called IPO charts. It is input processing output charts. This is easy actually, but actually, you are going to use this when you have input or data. Okay, so you have the input now, you have the first column will be the input, the second column will be, will be the processing column. I am now on in slide number 10. The third uh, column will be the output record. The output record. So, based on this, suppose you have an input, okay, and it is supposed to have a processing to, to or to do some calculation, and suppose to know what is the output. So, 
this is part of problem solving. You know, when you, uh, you, you sh should specify or determine the input and what, are, what you are going to process, and then you, you should know what are the, out the output of your program. Okay. Now here, it's easy, inshallah. But, uh, problem one, uh, can anyone just uh, please, now I am in slide number 12, anyone uh, please read this and uh, I need someone of you to tell me what is this problem about. Okay, problem number one. Yeah, I read it for one minute and uh, tell me what is this problem about. You, uh, you still in slide number 10? I hear someone talking. Okay, I will. Uh, we are now in slide number 11. Sorry about the connection loss. I will give me seconds. Uh, <clears throat> in slide number 12, okay. I have talked about this chicken and how uh, in input output we prefer using this chicken and handwriting, okay. This help you to focus more. Now I am in slide number 12, guys. Can you see the slides? <clears throat> yes. That's good. Go ahead now. Read this problem. What is this problem about? Just I want to, to show up the participant list. The number now is 36. Okay. Anyone can tell me what is this problem about? Yes, Mark, go ahead. Uh, yes, doctor. Uh, problem I see here, uh, there is someone, his name Ahmed. Yes. And he yes. want to, uh, uh, he want to uh, calculate the tax uh, from yes. uh, his, um, what was his name? From the base, maybe it's purchase or payment. Yeah, uh, you want yeah. to know how much the tax, okay? And he has two price. The first price is uh, 67, I think. Yes. And the tax for this uh, number is uh, five. Uh, five. Five, yeah. And another number is uh, 100, and the tax for this uh, number is uh, two percent. Uh, yes, okay. So, that's great. Thank you, Omar. We have here, uh, as you can see, how we are solving the problem. We have specified, that's good, the input. I have two input here, purchase amount, sales, tax rate. Then I have to write my algorithm. I have to enter the first value. Then I will multiply, I will multiply the purchase amount by the sales tax rate. Then finally, I will display the sales tax rate. So I am now in slide number 13. So the output is the sales tax. Here, the, how, how much money I have paid. I have 67 real and we have also 100 real. The sales tax here is uh, 5%, here is 2%, then I and I also I have calculated here with the sales tax. So in this IPO flow charts, I have to determine the input, determine the algorithm in the first step, and what is the output, then I have to write the value here. So as you know here, we have some facts about the problem. I know what are the tax, I know what about the purchase amount, I know what is the output here. How, how can this help me? When I run my program, I will enter this value, for example, 67, and I will uh, uh, enter also the tax sales. 
After that, I will calculate the sales tax. Okay, the sales tax. The uh, sales tax rate, sorry, here. Purchase amount multiplied by sales tax rate, then I will come out or print out the sales tax or the amount of sales tax. Okay. This is one of the problem. Another problem here, just we, uh, we want you to try to analyze the problem and use IPO chart. As you can see here, we have the problem and we have the IPO chart. Now, uh, please take, take all. Yes, Abdullah, you have a question now? Do you have any question? Yes, yes. Uh, it's me the IPO chart will ask to create the program. It's like a map to create program. Yes, it's one of the, the, the steps that help you that help you to to uh, specify the input, the output, uh, the input and the process and the the output. Okay. It is just like not a, a plan, it's a technique help you to program, yes. It's like flowchart and BCD code, okay? Oh. But it's but you are using this when you have some facts or some inputs, real facts and real inputs about the program, okay? Yeah. Yes. Uh, any questions for now? Now I will go to a problem two, or you will go. Actually, now I am in slide number fourteen. So please go to slide number 14 and read, uh, read this problem, problem two. Okay. And uh, once I will give you two minutes in order to read this example and we will try together to solve or uh, uh, create the IPO, the IPO. Sure. I will give you two minutes, okay? Okay. Yalla, anyone can tell me what is this problem about? Other than what? Keep your hand, uh, keep it up, keep your hand, your hand up. I will just wait for others. Yes, Mshari, go ahead. Uh, there is a hotel manager wants to uh, total bill for the guest uh, that stay in the hotel. So yes. there you have uh, two bills. Uh, and two every bill have two rules. You have two classes, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Two, two guests, for example. Uh, yes. One guest is say for four nights, and yes. uh, then I uh, the room is uh, one hundred real. And yes. room service uh, is twelve real, and telephone charge is uh, five real. Yes. Uh, so we have, I think, it's, uh, to multiply four. Uh, four nights per uh, night, uh, per the night, and uh, four multiply per hundred. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, add it to the room service and telephone charge. Yes. Uh, what we are going to do here is to multiply, multiply the cost of the room by the number of days and adding some extra uh, or some other charges like telephone or room service, whatever. So now we are, we know the input here. We will, uh, our first step is to draw the chart, the first chart here. I am now in slide number 15. I have the number of nights, I have per night rate, I have room service, I have telephone charge. So these are the inputs. So I have entered here first for the first customer, 
the number of nine four is which one is going to use for example the one the uh, room that cost 100 riyal and he will use the service room service and the telephone so four multiplied by 100 thank you Shari. good four multiplied by 100 will be 400 plus 12 plus 5 will be 417 and for the second, uh, the, the second guest or the second guest star is going to stay in the hotel for two nights and he will be 55 real for each night, where one night, and he's going to use the room service charge here, he will be 20, he will not use the telephone charge, so the total bill will be uh, 130. So this is how we are using the input processing output uh, chart. We just specify the input. What we, in the processing, we write our algorithm, what we are going to do. We will multiply, multiply for example, the number of nice bar by a surprise. Then we will add some service or uh, some extra chart that the customer is going to use. Okay, and finally the output will be just like a bill, a bill for the uh, for the customer. Okay. Time for now. I just I will give you a break for now. We are in and now the time is 8:47, so I will give you let's say. Eight minutes, I will start inshallah at uh, 8.55, okay? Just take a break for eight minutes, okay? And we will come back again because now I'm going to talk about C++, some C++ codes. So we will take a break now and please uh, come back and don't leave the meeting, okay? Come back in, in eight minutes. Thank you.